The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light, sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, Doctor, we have uh, lots of people coming to the Holy Prophet and offering for her hand in marriage. Now, the Holy Prophet وسلم, clearly stated that the marriage is only appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself mm. and not by him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to give his daughter to Amir al Mu'mineen. Now, <clears throat> what, what uh, we can touch on this is if you can provide just a bit of details as to uh, how it came forth. I understand you had a hadith yeah. you'd like to share. Yeah. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin al-Masumin. Wa lanatullah ala 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 ajma'in. Yes, as, as we mentioned in the previous um, episode, um, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, when he received complaints from the people, uh, from the men of Quraysh, uh, he said, Wallah, by Allah, I swear by Allah, uh, that I didn't reject you and marry her to Ali, uh, but it was Allah who rejected you and it was Allah who married her to Ali. Uh, alayhi um, there's another hadith which is very interesting and um, really we need to sort of if you like reflect on it which gives uh, uh, shed some light on the status of Fatima Zahra uh, uh, alayhi as um, it's narrated from uh, in Kafi volume 5 page 568 uh, uh, Imam Baqir alayhi narrates that uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said um, I am a human being like you. Uh, I marry like women from you, and I um, marry my like it doesn't say, but my daughters or stepdaughters to you, um, except Fatima. So Fatima is an exception. Um, her marriage is as, as I receive according to instructions from Allah, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the heavens. Um, so this is quite significant. Because it, it, it once again shows the importance and the rank of these personalities that they're basically uh, they're stressing out both the Holy Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. Yes. That they are not normal people like everyone else. Yeah, uh, 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 exactly. They, uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi categorically stating that um, um, he um, can marry his other daughters, which are stepdaughters, mm -hmm. um, and um, he can marry himself uh, to any, marry any of the women uh, in Quraysh or in Muhajirin Ansar. Um, but um, the issue of the marriage of Fatima Zahra is out of his hand. It's, uh, uh, if you like, he doesn't have uh, wilaya, if you like, in that case. Uh, it's, it comes from the heaven. Um, so this is something which is quite significant. Um, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi that um, you, I, 
make the decision, if you like, um, uh, about her, the marriage of Fatima to Zahra And this reflects uh, the great status uh, of Fatima Zahra, the like of which we have none before or after her. Uh, for any man or woman, we don't we don't have that. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, um, as far as marriage is concerned, I am responsible, or I make the decision for this individual. We don't have that except for Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. Another hadith says, "Qad khataba al ashrafu min Rasulillah." In the book Kashf al Ghumba, volume one, page three one six three six three, that the noblemen of Quraysh. Uh, or the noblemen uh, sought the hands of Fatima Zahra uh, in marriage from, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and his reply was in amraha ila rabbiha her, if you like her business is uh, goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to await his instruction we have to await the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sha'i zawujaha zawjaha whenever Allah wills he will marry her to her uh, who would be the husband. And so it shows that there were numerous attempts, numerous uh, uh, occasions where people came forward, uh, not only, if you like, average people, um, but according to this, Al-Ashrafu, Al-Ashraf, the noble people, uh, noble, noble men came forward to ask for the hands of Fatma Zahra in marriage, mm -hmm. and um, his response was very clear. So going back to this issue that Allah, this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi that he, Allah will decide and the Prophet always said that I await instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as far as marriages, her marriage is concerned. <coughs> Which again, that goes to show, um, basically is to point to the status of Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. Of course we have, when uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married his daughters. When they say his daughters, they're not really his daughters. Zainab and Kulthum and Ruqayya, if you like. They were the nieces of Sayyidah Khadija, that is the daughters of uh, Sayyidah Khadija's sister. Um, and um, So did uh, Sayyidah Khadija's sister pass away? Pass away and so they were taking care of them. Uh, and then they were at least um, uh, in the care of Sayyidah Khadija and when she married the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were in the care of uh, um, uh, him and when he married them to different uh, people <coughs> um, he didn't say you know their business is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you only said that for Fatima to Zahra who stressed out the importance and the significance of this personality yeah. uh, and one thing I wanted to discuss is regarding a very um, important misconception with regards to how old was Fatima al-Zahra when she got married to Amir al-Mu'mineen salam. Now, um, as you've mentioned, uh, unanimously, we all agree that she was about nine years old. Now, nine years old, one automatically will think that when, when you see a nine-year-old in the street, that, that's a baby, that's a child. So realistically, it would not be a norm for a child to marry an adult. And correct me if I'm wrong, would, would they practice this even in uh, Yam Jahiliya? Would they marry children to adults? Yeah. Um, well, the question is, was that the norm? Yeah. Um, um, uh, at, that, at that time to marry ch children of that age or uh, girls of that age. Mm. Um, we know that um, uh, as from the... Uh, religious point of view, it becomes permissible from that age, if you like, to, for them to marry. But in the case of Fatima al-Zahra, let's be s s specific, and uh, as I showed you the hadith, inshallah, I can read. Mm. Um, from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, is that when Fatima al-Zahra was born, uh, talking about uh, the case of the birth of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, and um, it said that she would grow in a day like a child would grow in a month. A normal child would grow in a month. 
and uh, Fatima Zahra would grow in a, in a month like a normal child would grow in a year. So, um, if you like her physical, apart from her maturity when she was nine, um, her mental or intellectual maturity, her physical growth was something of the e extraordinary. And it wasn't a normal growth. So, so it was like a supernatural. Uh, so by the <coughs> time she was nine years old, she probably didn't look like a nine years old. Mm. And of course, we have something similar in the case of Imam Zaman, in case of Imam Mehdi, um, when he was born, his aunt, uh, uh, say the Hakima, she would report that he would grow, this newborn child, he would grow in a day like he, a normal child would grow in a month or uh, he would grow in a month like a normal child would grow in a year. Um, so when he was, if you like, five years old, at the time when they, uh, uh, they killed his father, Imam Hassan al-Askari, in the year 260, um, as you mentioned earlier, that they were looking for uh, a small child. But probably he had grown, he, he looked like far older than a five-year-old. Uh, anyway, in this case, um, according to this hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi uh, salam, which is narrated, um, if I may, I just uh, um, um, look it up in here. It's narrated on uh, Al-Mufadl ibn Umar. Um, he asked about the, the birth of Fatima al-Zahra. It's a detailed hadith. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go through it, um, but it's very interesting. Um, but... Um, uh, it would say that at the end of the hadith that he would, uh, she would grow in a month. She would grow in a month like a normal child would grow in a year. Um, and um, so, if you like, we, uh, at least I can't tell you for sure that um, at that time it was the norm for nine-year-olds to marry. But, but for Fatima to Zahra, she it, was definitely it, not a nine-year-old child. It, uh, she, um, so she may have no, been she, nine years in age, but right. she had uh, the physique, the body of a lady. Of other than that, according to this. Mm. Uh, uh, so she, yes, it probably, uh, it, 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 whether it was a norm or not for other children, we don't know. But sp specifically, as far as uh, Sayyidah Fatima was concerned, she didn't look like a normal nine-year-old when she was nine years old. Mm. And her growth was not a natural phenomenon, if you like, um, according to this hadith. Which is very important um, to clarify so people can understand. So when they hear regarding the marriage of Fatima al Zahra, they would not think that, oh, look, for example, if it's in the case of a non-Muslim, yeah, that, oh, look, they're promoting pedophilia. Yeah. Or, oh, look, they're marrying adults to children, you know. Yeah. Yeah. barbaric things and yeah. whatever with regards to the marriage itself uh, how did it come to be was was the holy prophet instructed by Allah and then the holy prophet went to Amirul Mu'mineen or did Amirul Mu'mineen salam come to the holy prophet um, yes uh, the prophet sallallahu was instructed by um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact according to one one narration um, Anas ibn Malik reports this and um, he says I was with the Prophet because if you like Anas ibn Malik although um, um, he, he was serving the Prophet sallallahu mm -hmm. alayhi and he says I realized that um, he went into a state which is uh, uh, the normal the state that he goes into when normally he receives wahi he receives a revelation what state would that be would we know um, a description maybe that something physically would happen to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Um, sometimes they say that you, you can see as if he's under, um, there is a weight on his body or sort of a, uh, as if he faints, but he closes his eyes and he receives the instruction. And um, it says, Okay. And then when he uh, finished receiving the wahi, um, he said to Anas, أَتَدْرِي يَا أَنَسْ مَا جَاءَ بِهِ جِبْرَائِلِ مِنْ صَاحِبِ مِنْ صَاحِبِ مِنْ عِنْدِ صَاحِبِ الْعَرْشِ Do you know, or oh Anas, do you know what uh, Jibra'il has um, revealed to me uh, from uh, the owner of the arsh, that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
And he said, no, what is it? And he said, in Allah Amarin and Azawaj of Fatima ibn Ali. Allah has, instru has just instructed me to marry Fatima to Ali. Allahum salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And um, there are various narrations. In one narration, say that uh, uh, some people used to say, amongst them, Abu Bakr Umar, used to say to Imam Ali, you go and um, um, ask um, for Fatima's had in marriage. Uh, we have asked on numerous occasions and uh, we were rejected. And uh, as you say, that Imam Ali used to be shy. So um, uh, after a lot of pressure from these people, he went on another occasion, his brother uh, uh, came and, if you like, he, he interceded and sort of he came forward. Um, but in any case, uh, the uh, Imam went and uh, and asked, at least he went and sat, he, uh, the Prophet says, he knew what he has come for, mm. okay? And he asked what Zara and they agreed. And another occasion, and another occasion, uh, when Imam Ali came, immediately the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said to him that I've been instructed to marry you, uh, uh, to marry Fatima to you, uh, and um, and the dowry for that will be four hundred silver coins. Do you agree? And Imam Ali alayhi salam said, I do. I, I agree. So, if you like, in both cases, whether they are similar, in one case Imam Ali went and sat there at the. Uh, uh, encouragement of others to go and sit him, whether he just went on his own. And uh, the Prophet informed Imam Ali السلام, that he has been instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to marry Fatima to him. And we've got a lot of details. I don't know how much time we have. We probably don't have much time, but we have, there are a lot of details about um, uh, the, um, the act, the, when you're carrying out the marriage contract. Um, and uh, the walima, if you like, the banquet that they held. Um, there is one hadith uh, from Imam Ali al -Salam that they held a banquet for or the walima for the ma for marriage, and um, they invited all the people of Medina. And um, Imam Ali says in that uh, uh, hadith that more than four thousand people attended uh, this banquet. Allah. So that goes to show that roughly the population of Medina at that time was mm. about 4,000 people, just over 4,000 people. Oh, well, mashallah. Okay. And um, the food which uh, remained, um, the, the Prophet sallallahu divided up, put it in, 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 in uh, large plates and distributed it amongst the people. And was the setting up, the preparation of the wedding, was it um, organized by the community or was it alone left by Amir al-Mu'mineen to sort. It was by the Prophet and Amir al-Mu'mineen. So it, with you like to the, the person who was managing, managing it was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But for organizing, for example, food for the entire city, yeah. that, that oh, would you require, mean it. Yeah, yeah. That would require a lot of resources yes. and, and time. Yeah. So when it came to the resources, uh, did Amir al-Mu'mineen take care of that? Uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen along with all the people who would come and help, obviously. Okay. Um, so it was a team prevent. effort, basically. Yeah. The community yeah. helped all together well, to set up the marriage. Uh, rather than community, they must have um, appointed or uh, asked individuals to come and help, you know, rather than okay. just open-ended. Okay. Uh, uh, Imam Ali would go, or the Prophet would mm. go and ask certain individuals uh, that you should come and help with this prepara food preparation and so on, which, as I said, for f more than 4,000 people, the whole entire city, if you like, which is a... Uh, uh, it's not an easy task. Definitely. And inshallah, in the next session, we can go into more details. Inshallah. Walhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin wa Fatima Zara alayhi salam is superior to, uh, if you like, uh, we have various hadiths that superior to all men and women, except uh, the Prophet Imam Ali alayhi salam. Um, uh, so not only say that in Salah Alameen, but she has uh, she has superiority over other uh, all other men and um, men except with the exceptions of uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Imam Ali um, Not only that, in the case of marriage Fatima Zara and Imam Ali alayhi salam, they are the only couple in the history of mankind who are both ma'sumah.